Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to yet another rousing episode of The Ungrown Ups. This is episode 41, also known as the, the 41st episode. This is also our post spring break shenanigans episode where we recap. Is spring break over or are there still certain certain schools yeah. are on spring break? Probably still. It's I would say at this point, almost everybody's over with because I mean, growing up as a kid, Spring break was either the week before or the week after Easter. And of course, with college, you had a couple of weeks before, a couple of weeks after. But I think I, at this point, we're damn near in May. So I believe Chapman was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, they might have been. But yeah, because, think, because you a lot of parents all of a sudden walking around with kids that week. And then they had a lot of um, a lot of cars had <laughs> on the door. It took me a while to figure out what this was, uh, had a, a sticker on the door that like at the door seam. Oh, right the rental the car. Like yeah, your car's been yep. sterilized. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it took me a while to figure that out. But I saw the, that for the first, I saw that for the first time in Arizona too. And it's a, it's an ugly ass, huge sticker that goes yes. across the, the, like the, the door in the, in the B pillar. Yeah. And it, Looks like almost like a crime scene, do not disturb thing, but it's just this jagged sticker that's been yeah, torn in half. Why don't you just take it off? Well, it's got to just peel right off. So why do people leave it there? Why even bother? Why don't you just put like a it's little safety, bro? Yeah. So I'm going to feel much safer that they stuck this sticker across my door after they, they sterilized it. Right. But yeah. they could have just said, Hey, it's been sterilized. And then just put a post-it note on the, or something like that wasn't as sticky as a full blown sticker. I don't know. I think it's supposed to come off easy. It just cracks me up that you break the seal and then nobody has the, like, they leave it there. Just take it off. It looks stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's the one I saw was shaped like a stop sign. It was yellow and black. So oh, it no. Had this kind was of like, like a stern looking. There's like a green one for whatever rental car that agent that is. The green. Dollar? No. Thrifty? Enterprise? Maybe, 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 enterprise, enterprise. maybe enterprise. Yeah, I just, these are probably the same people, though, that drive a Toyota and their license plate frame says Toyota. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. it says, uh, you know, like, I have a Forerunner. My license plate frame would say Forerunner if I was one of those right. people. With the fancy script. Right. Yeah, yeah. That, On that, the vehicle that is already labeled. Yes. Well, because you want to make sure that people know that this is a Forerunner. Did you know that rental car- <laughs> It's so stupid. Well, it's totally stupid, but people sometimes like to share that they're stupid. Did, have you seen that rental car prices are crazy now? I have not because I haven't rented a car. So neither have I, but I, I see I saw articles online. And but basically, why are you looking at it? Oh, you're seeing articles. I'm seeing okay. articles about it. And what it is is during the pandemic, like a lot of rental car companies were hurting for money because obviously sure. people weren't traveling. They weren't renting yeah. cars. That's so, how it they, works. so they sold a lot of their inventory at auction or whatever and just offloaded a bunch of vehicles. So they got rid of a bunch of vehicles because there wasn't any demand. Right. Now that demand is picking up. They don't have the supply, so you're seeing rental car fees for like three hundred oh, so, bucks yeah, a day in Orlando. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Right. Right. I can't imagine though, because I mean, for those people that I guess are planning a trip or whatever, you don't think that the rental car is going to be the big expense, and all of a sudden you're surprised to see well, rental cars were never like crazy cheap either, right? If you did it far enough in advance, it wasn't bad. I haven't rented my own car in a long time. Like yeah. it's always been company, and I never. Yeah, yeah I think I the look. last time I rented a car was Maui in 2019 because that's usually yeah, right yeah and so there i think for the week it was maybe 700 800 bucks for you know a full week it's a decent amount of money it's 100 bucks a day you yeah. know it's you're on an island you know you, so you you realize the prices there are probably a little bit elevated yeah but, milk is like 11 dollars right but orlando to rent a car 300 bucks a day i guess i would ask why are you in orlando well it's you know it's disney freaks right speaking of disney it's did you I, well hang on because this isn't going to go where you think it's going to go oh it's actually going to go to something i learned the other day that has nothing to do with disney um did you know sloths sloths like the animals yes yeah they actually technically have four arms so the rear legs are just arms yeah okay i just learned this the other day I just felt the need to share and that's related to disney i told you it's not i but said then how did it remind you i have no idea your brain works in mysterious ways. It totally ways. does. It totally does. I have no we, clue. We've gone from rental cars to Disney to sloths. Just in a straight well, yeah. line. Right. No. Yeah, that was a strange. So now back to Disney. They're open on the 30th. Yes. Uh, but I've also... Only dude, did you if see you're, how much? Only if you're a California resident. Right. So I can't go. Why? Because I'm technically not a California resident as far as my driver's you, license goes. I was going to say, how do you prove it? Do you have to actually enter yeah, driver's license, license number? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but the, uh, 
what's crazy. So I was actually talking to Jason about this yesterday. We went to dinner and um, the prices are insane. Basically for one day, one park is just as much as his old passport was or his old pass. It's Uh, like $400 or something for two people to go to one park. Oh shit. Oh, it's insanely expensive. And you have to basically like buy a ticket, make a reservation. It just sounds like a, it's a, it's a process. Yeah. Cause I think the park occupancy is set to something like 15% or 25%. I think it's 25. I would say, so, um, not, I I can't remember the timing of it, but, um, uh, Avengers world opens at downtown Disney and shortly after. Right. Right. And that does look kind of cool. And those are the kind of things like, that's where you would want 25% less capacity, right? Because right, then it's, you, the you can see, right. You can see the whole deal at the same time. I just wouldn't pay that kind of money. I don't know. I would pay that kind of money just to deal with 75% fewer strollers but that's just to get in people. Oh yeah. Right. And you still have right. You're okay. Concessions so, and yeah, you've got everything else. The only place to get booze at Disneyland still remain. Well, no, actually now they have Olga's cantina and blue Bayou, but you're not going to be able to get a reservation in any of those places. Right. So I don't know. I've man. never, had a reservation to either of those places, so it's not like I'm missing anything. Because no, the canteen is it. super cool. Yeah. I, yeah, s- yeah, I still haven't seen any of that Star Wars. Honestly, land it is worth. It. Even if you're not necessarily, and we've talked about this a little bit before. I think even if you're not necessarily a huge Star Wars fan, the detail, the immersion, like it's, it's right. I, I so do want to check it it's out. It's worth going. I do want to check right. it out, but obviously, I'm in no rush to rush out now. No, no, you no, know, no, post pandemic, no. and then I'm also just one of those things where it, it's. I know I'll appreciate it, I'm, but I'm definitely more of a casual fan, and I do want to check yeah. it out. But if I have to wait another year to do it, right, totally fine. Well, meanwhile, Knott's Berry Farm, one hundred dollars get you an annual for pass. an annual pass. Yeah, one hundred and one, I think it was. Yeah, it's actually tempting. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, my son uh, when he, well, he still is young, but I mean, when he would go to the summer <laughs> when camp, he was a child, when, when he was a child, yeah, as he continues to be, it turns out. Yeah, well, he's at the ripe old age of eleven. He, right. he had his eleventh birthday not too long ago. Yeah. But anyways, that counts as a child. Then. Yeah, yeah, he still he still eats off a kid's menu at selected restaurants. <laughs> he uh, he would go to a summer camp program, and the summer camp would do field trips to the different uh, places. So he would go to like John's Incredible Pizza or a bowling alley or to Knott's Berry Farm or an Angel Game, and so the days that. On those days that he would go to Angel State or to uh, Knott's Berry Farm, yeah. I would take the day off of work. My son would get on the bus with his his uh, classmates or whatever and do the field trip thing. I would drive to the park, meet them at the front gate. I would buy a ticket, and then my son and I would just blitz through all the lines as fast as we could and go through all these rides. And then he would meet up with his his camp buddies and then head back to camp. But that way, because the the problem with the the camp setup is he's in line with like 20 kids and they kind of have to vote and decide on what ride they're going on right. next. So getting everybody on the same page was kind of a challenge, but when it's just him and I, Knott's Berry Farm can be a lot of fun when you're, when there's not much of a line and you can just ping pong through all the course, all the uh, coasters. Yeah. And I like that they have more like actual coasters, but yes. so I just looked it up $101. Uh, if you don't want a discount on food, it's 135. If you want a discount on food, uh, which is a 10% discount, you go to, um, oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? Not Soak City. <laughs> You're reading the fine. Oh, Soak City is a water park. I don't want to go to that. No, right. okay, so it's 101 bucks. The other, you otherwise, you get Soak City. Who no, I don't want that. And there's no blackout dates. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's worth doing. And you can go to eat at Mrs. Knott's. Yes, all I the love fried chicken. Have you been there? Oh, I've been a bunch of times as a kid. I, so I can't good. say when the last time I've been. It's been probably more than a decade. Our mutual friend, Jacob. Yes. Uh, Jacob and Lissa and Walsh and a bunch of other folks, we all went. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like a years ago. Just but. for the hell of it? Yeah, it was a random let's go Saturday to or get Sunday. Some fried let's go to, no, let's go to, to Knott's and then oh. we ate at the restaurant as well. That sounds like fun. I'm sure I'm missing somebody. Oh, yeah. Well, but it was fun. Just speak up if you got left out and let us know. We won't, we won't care, but well, They're probably not listening to this anyways. <laughs> right? It turns out, so for the record, we skipped a week. We did skip a week. Uh, I don't. Remember why you were flying? You you had to catch a flight. Oh, that's right, and, and we I, couldn't yeah. get together in time. Right, right. So, um, and actually, it worked out making sense. I probably would have been late for my flight otherwise. But anyway, so we skipped a week. Nobody seemed to have noticed, Sarah. Yeah, because usually I'll, I'll put something up on social media saying, "Hey, yeah, we didn't even do that. We were lazy, and we were so lazy that we didn't even bother to be lazy with the post." <laughs> and uh, so it worked out. But yeah, so I had my spring break adventure in Arizona. So we were gone. Uh, April 1st through the 10th, which it seemed like a lot longer. I'm not gonna lie. Like for whatever reason, 
It seemed like you were gone for a long time. Were you milking like like Dave does? Were you no, hanging no. on to posts? I don't do that. I, I, I post in the moment. But, oh, okay. But I think it's because of the fact that it, it went through two weeks, right? We left on a Thursday. Yeah. Had the oh, weekend. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it yeah. went through the right. following week. So right. it seemed longer. Right. And uh, so the, the adventure started off. We, we took the 40 out to Arizona and we stopped in a little. Did you have a 40 on the 40? No, no, I don't drink and drive. No, no, no. Like at, uh, you don't have to do it while you're driving, but like at some point no. near the 40. No, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I guess okay. when we were in Williams. There you go. You should have done but, that. But um, we, uh, we stopped at Oatman, Arizona, which is basically a tourist trap that was like an old mining town kind of thing back in the day. And there's wild burrows. Yeah, Oatman's cool. That just roam the street. I mean, street. it's not cool. It's, it's a tourist trap. Yeah. But it, it was fun to kind of get out and walk your le- walk around and stretch your legs for, you know, because at that point, I think we were in the car for like three or four hours. So walked around, check that out. They have like a, a, a stunt show uh, gunfight like at noon or something that we didn't care for because the crowd was like all waiting up. And like, oh, eh, yeah, yeah. We know what's going to happen. You can see that at Knott's. Exactly. Or you used to be able to. Remember, you used to, they'd rob the train? Oh, yeah, yeah. They still do that? They still do that. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know, pandemic timing, but... Well, I mean, you know what? The bandanas wouldn't look out of place, at least this time. Well, how would you know who's part of the show and who's not? Ooh. Ooh. Maybe it's the Spanish flu version. <laughs> it's period correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we did the Oatman thing, and then uh, from there, we drove into uh, Flagstaff. And the, the one thing that I will say with, with Arizona, it was interesting to see the farther north you got the more angry the anti-mask crowd was. I'd have to imagine it's north or east. Maybe. And so the further, because our trip, we started off north and we kept moving south in each stop because we went from uh, the Grand Canyon to... That was your first stop. That was our first stop. Yeah, Williams, Grand Canyon, and then to Sedona and then to Scottsdale. I love Sedona. Sedona was amazing. Did so you, you said you did some uh, off-road type expeditionary we, tours. We, we did some adventuring. So yeah. we uh, <laughs> adventure. the Grand Canyon was fun because look, we had talked about how we wanted to rent bikes and we were bummed, yeah, yeah, and right. so we ended up but buying ended scooters. Up, but yeah, right. It was actually better that we bought scooters than actually had rented bikes because our plan was we were gonna if we had rented the bikes, yeah, we would have picked them up at the Grand Canyon, right, and then rode over to the shuttle bus, the Blue Line bus, and taken that all the way from the beginning to the end and change buses to the red line bus. And the red line takes you to the, the greenway, which is this paved trail. That's right along the rim of the South, the it's South rim of, of the Grand Canyon. a lot of buses. It's too many buses. It's two buses, right? Yeah, I don't like it. Well, we get there and of course we have our scooters. The, sure. the blue bus is not running at all. So had we, what do you mean? they weren't running it. Really? Yeah. So, so you still, you would have had to ride anyway. You would have had to ride the entire length of the blue line, which is right. like 17 miles. Oh, geez. And Jeanette was like, hell no, I'm not yeah. doing that. That's pretty far. I I'm mean, not that's riding a... 17 miles just to then ride yeah, the yeah, part yeah. we want to ride. Right. I mean, so, that's, that's not a, a small ride. Oh, no, not, not at all. Right. And so since we saw that it was closed, we hopped back in the car and I drove all the way up as far as I could um, along the, uh, the the rim. Yeah. And uh, I can't remember where we stopped. But basically, there's a bunch of hotels and a little cluster of hotels right there. Yeah. And a, uh, our studio gallery thing so we parked right there and that was right where the the red line bus that we wanted to take was and so we get on that bus and they let you on the bus with scooters yeah they fold up small and you're sitting on the bus every other row is blocked off Mm -hmm. so we could stash the scooters in those empty rows Mm -hmm. so we get to our spot and we're scooting and it was the scooting i I don't know what it sounds dumb it sounds quite dumb but you realize that we were probably the only damn people on scooters in the entire Grand Canyon because, you know, well, who else would be doing right. it? Right. But the other thing that was really cool was we were passing people and the other people that were on the, tra- on the trail going the opposite direction were either hiking yeah. or biking mm-hmm. and they all looked miserable. And here we are, my wife, son, and I are, are just giggling, giddy, just scooting down. Because you're and on just, scooters doing it different. Yes. All right. And we were having a blast. Look, we, I'm not taking away from your experience by any means. Yeah. But I still like scooters are ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, but it beats the hell out of walking. It does beat the hell out of walking. I mean, although you've opened my eyes right before we started to a different type of scooter that I'm still concerned about. Yes. I'm not going to lie to you. We, we will get into this. Um, so we had Razor scooters, you know, the typical folding yeah. cheap Razors. But yeah. I, Jeanette and I had the, the more premium adult ones. So they were Are you like, going to pimp your scooters now that you own them? My wife and I might use them for the occasional neighborhood stroll or something yeah. just to get use out of them. Yeah. But um, ours were like 65 bucks and yep. the full price was like 90. And then the Grayson scooter is one of those $29 folding ones. 
So anyways, is it an actual Razor scooter? Yeah, they're all Razor. They're all Razor branded. And so, oh crap! Did I tell you about where Razor came from? Did we talk about this? I don't know it. Okay, I'll just tell you really quick because I can't remember if we talked about this during the the podcast or not. But this. Sharper Image. Oh, that's right. You did mention this. Oh, okay, yes, we did. yes, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, Sharper I'm Image full of product just discovery. Just yeah. Random crappy facts. Yes. Well, I don't know if we talked about it, but you did share that information. Yeah, Sharper Image was the was the reason why Razor scooters became a thing. It yeah, was one he was of those at a toy fair in like in Asia and saw them, and then was like, "Here we go." They got exclusive yeah. rights for the first yeah, year. Exactly. And made it like a household name. Yeah, I just thought that was super. That was an article. I might have sent you the article. You sent you emailed me the article. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it was. I was hoping this was going to be another sloth story. No, 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 but I will tell you. Here's another <laughs> random animal fact, if you'd like, because okay. I'm, I'm big on this right now. Yeah, uh, elephants. Yes, are elephants. Tusk handed. Tu- tusk handed. So I guess that's the only way to put it. Or tusk. They prefer what? So you know they have a right and a left tusk. Yeah. So they have a preferred tusk. Yeah, like just like you're right or left handed. Yeah, sure. They use one tusk more than they do the other. So they have a. So that's pretty fucked up, though. When they're Why? getting hunted for their ivory, and somebody hacks off one of their tusks i think they just kill them which is even worse uh yeah i don't think they catch them at any i don't know so you can tell because one tusk will be worn more than the other oh interesting yeah that's all the animal facts right today did you read that on the back of a cereal box or something or where is this knowledge coming from no i don't know man (laughs) i just like i said i know a lot of weird stuff and i've been excited well i do too like you know the, the fact that the the largest consumer of canned dog food or people over 65 without dogs (laughs) oh <laughs> uh, wait what are you serious yeah why it's people are they on, eating it yes people oh. on fixed incomes that can't afford meat yeah no come on yeah you can <laughs> you can buy this no <laughs> that's so gross <laughs> like even though i mean i mean there's not it's not like there's horrible stuff in most dog food but if it's like 89 cent can of alcohol oh, or that's something so yeah, gross yeah. yeah could you even imagine I don't even want to, but I've eaten a lot that, of weird stuff. That fact I read, I think, when I was like twelve years old, and it's stuck. Oh, with me. Well, maybe <laughs> it's not true anymore. Like, maybe it's gotten better. Maybe it's maybe it's gotten better. Thanks, Obama. So that was a joke. Yes. So the uh, the Arizona adventure was awesome. Sedona was definitely the the the, the highlight of the trip. So we ended yeah. up meeting up with friends that we didn't know were in Sedona, and they were there with their RV and their Jeep. I know who that is. Yes. Yeah. So we met up with a. Uh, you with, call him a friend? Sure. All right. What would you call him, an acquaintance? A guy I don't care for. Okay. Just kidding. So Jeff, we, we met up yeah. with Jeff, and uh, well, the funny thing is, is we po- I posted something on social media, and he's like, how about a green Jeep tour? Because in Sedona, you see these pink, yeah. pink Jeep oh, tours. Oh, so he took you on in, in his Jeep. Yes. Yeah, that's funny. But uh, it took me a half a beat to figure out that he meant, oh, his Jeep. We're right, going right, for right, right, right. Yep. And so it was the... No, Jeff un- went off-roading with us. Why would I be... Right. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just obviously being a jerk. But uh, which is your nature. Correct. Yeah. 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 Um, so we met up and it was we went on this uh, this trail to a point called Chicken Point or Chicken Rock Point or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Because the rock looks like a chicken. I've yes. Been there. Well, I hadn't. Well, so yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know what to expect. I guess all I mean by that is I know what you're talking about. How about that? And the ride was really fun. I yeah. mean, instead of being in the tourist kind of pink Jeep, which are all over Sedona. Yeah. Um, which is like a. A long wheelbase XJ with extra seats bolted to the back. So yeah, it's got they this look weird. U-shaped seating in the back, and I think it carries something like eight people or ten. I wouldn't people. want to ride in one. Right, they look scary. Yes, and they're open to the elements. And right, we were closed off with air conditioning, yeah, so it was go. quite comfortable. But Jeff was piloting. My wife was up in the front seat, and Grace and I were in the back seat. And we're going off on this crazy off-road terrain, and we get to to Chicken Point, and we even brought the dog with us, and we realized that Pepper actually has a fear of heights. Really? I didn't know dogs could have one. How did that manifest? She would walk just fine until she realized she was close to the edge and that the actual ground was way far below her. Uh-huh. And then she just wouldn't want to walk any farther. So I would pick her up and so she'd like, be okay. But if you were walking on a, on her leash or something like that, yeah. she would just kind of dig in and see, like, nope, I'm not going there. Really? And then we would pick her up and move her to a park. She thinks she's going to fall or something. Right. But she oh. was a good, you know, 15 feet from the edge. So oh, even, that's quite... Scary then. I mean, that was quite afraid of. If you're saying that far away from an edge, yeah, fifteen feet. But I mean, I guess she, you know, from her, I don't know what it is. Maybe from her eye level, because I mean, she, her head's what fifteen inches off the ground. Yeah. So we picked her up and put her up on a, a rock, like a huge boulder that people were like posing on. Right, right. 
and we put her on that and she was just like get me out of here if she had like cat claws she would have dug them into the rock really and held her place interesting so it was fascinating to see that a dog could actually have well imagine though right with how short she is right anything over like double her height's gotta it's be, be like crazy. whoa what is yeah. this right yeah so we got to chicken point we did that whole off-road adventure we also um on grayson's actual birthday we went for a uh, ATV trail tour. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jen and I had ATVs, and then Grayson could just choose who he wanted to ride with. And so for about the first half of the ride, he was with me. And, you know, during... Oh, because he can't do his own? Right, right, because he can't pilot his own. And and the the quads are set up so that there's a backrest for the second seat passenger, so it's pretty safe. You don't have to, like, worry about holding on um, to to the driver. Well, it's not like you're on a thingy, the three, three... Do dad wheel thing. Oh, one of those weird three wheel ATCs. Eight, yeah, there you go. ATV. Yeah. ATV, I think, is the four wheel. ATC is the three wheel. But anyway, so we we did the ride, and you know, of course, they they give you the the um, the the safety speech, and they actually had everybody that was going to drive yeah. drive a scooter in their or drive a scooter drive a, a quad in their parking lot, so they can kind of see how you are with driving it. And there was a, a mother with. Was her, it a, a dirt parking lot or yeah, just a real parking lot? This this was a dirt part in the back of the parking lot uh, uh, where the setup was yeah. at, and um, so they had everybody. It was basically just like a tight oval with tires as kind of like the barricades, and you basically just had to show that you could control because it was a thumb throttle. Oh, not twist throttle. Not Those twist suck. throttle. Well, yeah, because then you get whiskey throttle, and then you get yeah. But know. the thumb throttles are just as they're yeah. just hard to mod- modulate when you're off road. Yes. And the the Modular. demo the demo quad was kind of a, a beater, and so they're, they're all automatics. They're CVT, yeah, so yeah. like you're trying to rev it to get it to go, and then it, it's 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 hard to find that rhythm. But the right. ones that we actually took on the trail were in much better shape, so oh, they were good. much easier to use. Yeah. But they had everybody kind of prove that they could ride. Mm-hmm. And one mother was there with her son, and she went on the ride, and the guy actually said, "Yeah, I don't think this is for you," and wouldn't let her go on the tour. Actually, told her to go back inside and they would give her her money how back. old was the kid like was he old enough that he could have driven and then she would have sat he on was back? he was right at that age but i don't think he was over 18 Got so it. he might have been like 15 16 yeah but not a, not be a, a bummer totally right yeah but so he, i don't think this is for you <laughs> and i think he meant it in the nicest way no possible. no of course but that's a great choice of words too yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think this is for you because she was really timid she could barely like oh, control it and stuff yeah. and he didn't want to have to because this was a 25 mile tour oh i thought you went free form that's what i thought it was going to be too uh this was more of a guided tour yeah which was it was fun how many people uh eight mm, that's approaching too many it was but grace uh, Jeanette and i were the back two yeah, quads yeah. so we kind of kept our distance sure which was fun because then i could romp on the throttle and then jump right so that was my whole thing Did i was you like, any sweet jumps yes <laughs> So what I would do is I would pay attention to the to the uh, quad in front of me, yeah. and whenever I saw them kind of jostle, yeah, yeah, you'd slow down, and then right, gun it right through that spot. So Grace and I got airborne a couple of times. That's funny, and so that was really fun. And then uh, there was a couple of parts where we're on this you know gravel access roads, and the, the speed limit's twenty five. And then if you stand up, you can kind of remove some weight from the rear wheel, and you can kind right. of fishtail the back end out. So we were kind of drifting. So we were doing all the things they told us not to do. Yeah, but what what else would you do? Right, yeah. and that's why I'm an ungrown up, <laughs> <laughs> or but, just a regular person renting a quad. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but it made me think a lot of like because I've never been on a uh, rental quad before with with a thumb throttle. Right. And right, it made right. me think of snowmobiling because the only I've time I've been, been on snowmobiling, snowmobiling is way I, fun. That's what I've heard, and I w- I would like to go. And it's also got the same thumb throttle yeah. kind of so thing. So a so, jet ski, oh, or yeah. a sea do. Oh yeah. Both of those. I have not sea dude. Really. I have ski dude. Yeah, okay, same thing. But not sea dude. Dude. Wait, but have you <laughs> well, hang on a minute. Have you been on the, the stand up or the sit down? Uh I've 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 sat, not stand. I've never been on like the, 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 old like the wave runner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Those are they're fun, but they're really hard to ride. You yeah. fall off all the time. Right. That would be something I would wouldn't mind trying, but I don't know anybody that has one. That's Actually, what... weirdly, I saw one today. Really? Like mm-hmm. on the back of a trailer or something? Oh, uh, I went to uh, a buddy of mine's going to order. I'm ordering some new control arms for the truck. Oh, yeah. And so he's going to get them for me. But he. Uh, what kind of control arms are you getting? Camberg. Uh, Camberg? Camberg, yeah. yeah I don't know if you know. Total Chaos. You, or... No, Camberg, Uniball. Oh, fancy. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, he uh, 
weirdly he's got one and i was like what the heck man was it just sitting in the shop or no well it's i went to drop some stuff off at his house but he's uh his brother-in-law i guess moved and gave it to him oh so he's like all right cool yeah it it seems like jet skis and hot tubs are usually the things that people just can't wait to get rid of and they just need somebody that'll take it for free nobody really wants jet skis anymore if it was a a, nobody really wants a a hot tub if it was a sea do right yeah but jet skis are kind of cool. What else would you call that? A personal watercraft? That just sounds stupid. I, I think that is what the category is called. Yeah, but I mean, sea has become pretty much ubiquitous. There it's was like a, Kleenex. There was like a TikTok video or something that went viral a couple of weeks ago where somebody had taken like a... a are you on the TikTok? No, no. Oh, okay. it, but it went viral enough that I saw it. I see. And it, it was... Somebody had taken the fiberglass hull of a sit-down personal watercraft, so a ski or whatever, yeah. and put it on top of a motorcycle. I've seen this. Yes. Well, you be, might have seen the maybe not that TikTok video, but I've seen that yeah. concept before. And it was kind of interesting. The guy, I mean, it's hard to look cool when you're in motorcycle gear stepping off of a jet ski. Sure. But it was interesting. Yeah. Whatever. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, so I, and neither tick nor talk. Yeah. So the 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 highlight I think of Sedona was one the the, the whole outdoors thing. So like the the hiking, yeah, the, the off roading. We, we managed to go to one of those vortexes. And so apparently, like, Sedona is really big for those that are, for people that are into, like, crystals and holistic uh, healing and stuff. Correct. And so the, there are these four vortexes that are supposed to have some sort of spiritual enrichment. Vortices, if you will. Yes, but nobody apparently uses the proper grammar and just calls them literally vortexes. Like, sure. the books is say, yeah, vortices is proper grammar, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. vortexes. Well, the English language is hard enough. That's yeah. not complicated. Yeah. So we, we went to one, and you're supposed to feel stuff. We didn't, but it was very pretty. Wow, you don't say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my, all sh- that, my, my chakras didn't do anything. All the hippie magic is not real. Possibly. Oh, speaking of hippie magic uh, and crystals, I have a friend in Washington that, uh, is she in Washington? Yeah, she's in Washington, and she sells or sold or something to do with crystals. Uh-huh. But she sent me a um, the child from the Mandalorian in a get green jade a little mini green jade statue of somebody child. actually carved somebody jade. did at some point that's kind of cool i mean it's green yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it fits. i like it yeah yeah it's fine does it come with like a little fuzzy jacket no no no, no. i'll show it to you before you go it's pretty funny but it was totally unexpected like i forgot i guess she asked for my address at some point and it showed up in the mail I was like, what the heck crystals what <laughs> where did this? i get this from yeah, yeah. what is that it's pretty funny so the uh the vortex we went to was like in uh boyton canyon and so the uh, it's a short maybe like quarter mile hike from like the parking lot trailhead yeah. and then you can go the other direction and do the the boyton canyon trail and we went on this hike and it's about three three and a half miles to the end, and then you turn around and go back. So you're about about a seven mile hike. It's not bad. And we had the dog with us, and we were in pursuit of what they called the secret cave. And well, how can you find it if it's a secret? Well, it's on Secret Mountain, but the mountain's right there, so it's kind of weird. Hmm. But it's also called Subway Cave, which the name made more sense. So we're walking, like, and it, it's like ho- sandwiches. Yeah, it would be pretty bad if you got there and there's just a subway there and a Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn it. So we, we walk all the you know, we're hiking out there and we've got the dog with us and she's she's taking care of business. I mean, she's hiking over trees and rocks and stuff, and so she's doing great. And we're about two miles in and we're like, we're you know, you have no sense of distance, and so you don't you know, okay, is it coming up? Right. So when we would pass people going the opposite direction, we're like, oh hey, did you guys find the secret cave? And Pretty much everybody we had asked had said no. We were looking for it. We couldn't find it. Oh, okay. Huh. So we keep walking. And finally, we, we see this younger couple. And we asked them. And they said yes. He's like, somebody put branches on the ground to make an arrow that points to where you need to go. Uh. And there's a small stack of rocks. And it's about 10 minutes from here. Yeah. All right, sweet. So we're all energized. Like, we're going to find this. And we walk up. And sure enough, there's three branches in the shape of an arrow. And the stack of rocks I was picturing to be like huge boulders, it was rocks the size of like your iPhone. It was like three or four of them stacked. So it was a pretty small stack. Yeah, that's close enough though. It's but so anyways, stacked. yeah, and it pointed to the, the, the part of the trail we needed to leave. Uh-huh. So we go off and it starts getting a little crazy because the trail isn't as well defined. Right. And you're going up in this weird terrain and you get up and the last part of the hike is to get up to the, the cave itself or what they call the cave. There's a a rock ramp that's roughly a 45 degree angle, mm-hmm. and it's about 
25 feet tall. So you've got to scamper up this ramp to get to this landing, in which case you can turn around and see this, this cave. And it's not really a cave as much as it is like a slot in the wall okay. that due to erosion, the walls have curved much like the subway tunnel. Uh, so when you look at it, you see like two like semicircles right, to your right. left and to your right. But there's no roof. There's no roof. Got it. So it's and not a cave. It's not truly a cave. But right. if you walk far enough back, you are under this overhang. So it is sort of kind of a mm. cave, but it's it's more like you're in this like U-turn or this kind of like niche. Sort of an amphitheater maybe? Sort of, All yes. Right. But absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pain in the ass to get to. And so you have this like this thrill of like accomplishment. Like, yep. yeah, I made it. Did you wear some sweet hiking shoes? Oh, hell no. Why? Because we didn't buy sweet hiking shoes. We oh, just had just, you know, shoes that were adequate. Okay. Um, I mean, that's, you're a little upset. <laughs> like, I just asked about footwear. I'm no, sorry. No, no. Yeah. I know. You and your shoe fetish. I, yeah. It's bad. But uh, no, so we, we just had like regular athletic shoes. Yeah. Um, and it might have helped that, that 45 degree incline at the very end to actually have something with, like with a real grip. Yeah. But um, we got up it. We got down it. Oh, that's cool. And then we're like, sweet. And then we're like, oh, shit, it's three and a half miles back. <laughs> To the car. That's, that's actually how that works, is you have to go out and yeah, back. Yeah, and back. Unless you're on a loop, in which but, case it's still out and back. Yeah. And so at this point, Pepper had had enough. And so she was a trooper for the first three and a half miles. But we had we brought a dog backpack. I was just going to ask, do you have a, a backpack of some type? Yeah. And you're talking about not a backpack for, for the, the dog. dog. You're talking about, well, well it, no, is it is for, for the, the dog. dog. <laughs> yeah, but not, she she's not carrying it. it. There you go. I wear it. Yeah. And she rides in it. And so it, it's got like a little harness that yeah. snaps through her collar and her head pokes out and her arms poke out. It's like a baby Bjorn for dogs, basically. That's awkward. It is awkward. Yeah. But she was fine with it and it was a lot easier to hike with her and not have to worry about her, you know. Did you practice with that or was that the first use? No, no, no. We were smart. We practiced around the neighborhood. Oh, so God, I got to okay. walk around the neighborhood showing off my dog on my back. To That's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. And they're looking at you going like, what the hell? I'm like, oh, yeah. we're planning on this hike. Well, I have... Uh, I know someone that walks their dogs in a stroller, so whatever, man. Yeah, that to me seems a little stranger because I mean, but they're also they're, they're like pound and a half chihuahuas, which at that point's not a dog. Yeah, and it's not getting any exercise, so why don't you just leave them at home? Well, it's a pound and a half. All it has to do is walk across the living room, and it's probably walked in its eyes f- across the U.S. Right. Yeah. So yeah, the stroller dogs are interesting. I'm starting to see those more and more in public. There was a dog uh, so he was having dinner at the restaurant I went to last night with the dog in the stroller. Did they keep the little mesh closed or was it open? Uh, I don't know. I didn't care to find out. Because the weird thing is is when you're a new parent you, you tend to look at strollers and you go, oh, let's see what the kid looks like. And then sometimes you realize that's a dog. Because the strollers are <laughs> pretty similar looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a stroller is a stroller. Right. But the dog the ones part. have a little bit of it. It's more of a flat platform. Well, sure. But I'm saying like as as far as it. Handle four wheels. What and it a looks like. Yeah, yeah, mechanism. exactly. Yeah. From, a, from a distance. Yeah. And before I went on my uh, on my adventure, I got some of my pre-ordered stuff. So remember I mentioned I pre-ordered the. Uh, yeah, you brought a toy with you. The Cybertruck. I got is- the proportion of the car itself to, to the, the remote, remote is ridiculous. Yeah, so the Cybertruck is the size of a typical Hot Wheel. It's 164 scale. That's the charging uh, the charger. Charger, I see. Okay. Yeah. The remote is like an oversized, like I would say it's an obese Xbox remote. I would, yeah, it's about the size of an Xbox remote. Yeah. So the difference in size between the remote and the car is profound. Like the remote could what have does been this like. What button do? Oh, Turbo Boost. <laughs> course yeah, yeah there's a turbo boost i still want to know how did they get all of the electronics inside of this thing well there's no battery it's capacitance so that's so cool though. yeah it is pretty cool and, it, and it, it actually does tank turns oh that's funny so you can when you when you uh turn the wheel it's actually making one or when using the remote it's turning one wheel forward and one right, wheel right. back and that's how it's turning left and right because the front wheels don't actually steer do uh so because of that, that's how they were able to save size because there's no... Oh, you got one with with uh, windows that aren't broken. I, I haven't put the decals on. Ah. So I've got the other one brand new in the package. I haven't figured out if I'm going to open it and Grayson and I will race. But Grayson did set up his Hot Wheels track and did some experimenting to see how far he could get the car to fly off and? the edge of the track. So far, his current record is 56 inches. That's pretty decent. Yeah, yeah a little you know, right. four and a half feet. Yeah. That's actually his height, pretty much. He can get the car to jump. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So... That that is uh that we've been playing with that surprisingly enough. Yeah. Just because it's such an absurd thing. I mean, you have this huge remote, this tiny little car, and when you don't, I mean, it's not like you really 
it's a thing you can pick up and screw around with for a few minutes and put it back, right? Yeah. This yeah. is this is something that's gonna be great when I'm back in the office. Yeah. Because I'm definitely gonna drive this around and just drive around my desk or other right. people's desks. But who knows when that's back that back the to the office, office thing is yeah. gonna happen? I I have no idea. Um. Uh, well, I mean, I was back in the office last week. Yeah, they put you on a plane. Yeah, I went on a plane. Went to the office. Uh, that's kind of cool that they flew you up. Because I would have figured they go, well, you're living in Southern California. That's your deal. You have to get here. Yeah, I mean, it probably should have been, but it wasn't. Cool and so yeah, there was there was some stuff that I needed to be up there for, and really, it was. Anyways, um, it was cool. I mean, it was fine. It was. It, it was work. Yeah, it's work. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, you know, we're like it's always busy still, so we just got a bunch of stuff to do. But you got that. I ended up picking up the Lego Discovery Space Shuttle. I kind of want it. It's pretty cool. Are you going to build it? or Are you going to leave it in the box? Well, if I had a place to put it, I would definitely build it. Yeah, you are so, kind of running out of space. Yeah, there's no space in here. I um, that and then um, I ended up pre-ordering the uh, the probe droid set coming out. The what droid? There's a probe. Remember the probe droid from Hoth? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a set, of a set of that coming out. I didn't realize it was called a probe droid. Yeah, so it's called it's probing and it's a droid. Uh-huh. Ergo, probe, probe droid. droid. Um, so I ended up getting that, but they uh, apparently are coming out with another R two D two set, which the rumor is it's going to have an injectable lightsaber. Is that the one where they you saw it teased in a video where they're showing yeah. something on a shelf, and then down on the lower shelf there's like the head of like R two D two. Yeah, I like R two D two. That who doesn't like R two D two? He's an adorable little beepy droid? boopy droid. Yeah, yeah. So that one I would possibly be interested in. Well, so they, like I said, they may have an ejectable lightsaber too, which is kind of cool. That in, part is fine. I don't care about that. In Return of the Jedi. That. Oh. Now, it'd be cool if they had a little nightlight holographic action. No, that wasn't action. in Jedi. Was that in Jedi? It was in Jedi. What's that? I don't know. I'm not yeah, going to correct you. It was in Return of the Jedi. But if it had a little projector element and could actually that play a little video. Cool. Maybe it'll come with a little... Oh, so another actually pretty cool thing. I'm not into Harry Potter by any means. I mean, I like the movies were cool. I read the books, but that's as far as it goes. I haven't seen either or read either. That's fair. Uh, but anyway, so one thing that Lego's doing that I think is pretty rad, they're buildable 10-inch minifigures. Oh, I've, I've, I've seen some of those. Yeah, so for those to be other, like, I'm sure they'll do other yeah, uh, themes. Uh, other... But that's what they're doing first is Ron and, no. What's the guy called? Harry Potter? Yeah, Harry. Yeah, Harry. And that makes sense now. It's a title character. Uh-huh. And uh, the Hermione or whatever her name is. Sure. And, and, yeah, just go with it. But anyways, the the possibilities for those are really cool. A buildable minifig. I think it's a neat concept. I'd be fine with just even a buildable Lego minifig. That, oh yeah, or like like if they had one like of a, the old space guys or right. like anything like if that. I could build really like cool. a ten yeah, inch yeah. minifig, yeah. like one of my favorite characters or whatever. That'd be kind of fun. They also, um, wow, where was that going to go? Uh, yeah, Swat. anyways, no, <laughs> no, 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 Tusk? Uh, it, yeah, but I, I think that's really neat. I think that there's a lot of possibility that they could do with them. I, yeah. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, Lego's done a really good job with like licensing and, and kind of make up with interesting sets and stuff. Like, well, like they the, did a recently, it was like a gift with purchase, and I didn't get it because I hadn't bought Legos in a long time. And sometimes, dude, those gift with purchases, that's just how they get you, right? Well, yeah. like, you know, but anyways, they did one that was cool. It was a two by, uh, two, by two brick, but it was a buildable brick. Oh, yeah, yeah I teal. saw that. Yeah. yeah. I would I wouldn't mind finding one of those. Probably eBay for some sort of absurd markup, maybe. Yeah, probably. Like my my, my buddy found a uh, a Voltron minifig keychain at the Lego store. And he's like, "Oh, this is rad!" And he had no idea that they actually had the full size Voltron set. And so I sent him a link to it because it's discontinued at this point, and he's now trying to find that Voltron set. That one. That, yeah, the one that's over your your left shoulder. What's yeah. really cool about it too? Oh no, it's like fifteen bucks on eBay. It's not too bad. Oh, that's never mind. It's a two by three. Ooh, fancy. that's pretty neat. Uh, the um, what's cool about that set too is it comes apart and it, and, each and it actually is all the lions, yeah, which is super neat. That's what I think makes the the, the that adds to like the surprise and delight factor of that right. set. Yeah. Now this is that set. It's pretty cool. Nice. Um. Anyway, so that th- there is some neat stuff that they're doing. Uh, it would be cool if they did other, I guess, themes, but I, that'll happen in the future. I'm sure. sure. Yeah. So what was your uh? What was the flight in flight experience like? Was it every other seat? It was, was Southwest. Empty? Okay. So it sucked. Do they still do group A, B, C? Or oh, yeah. It? Group A, B, C. Uh, flight was nearly full. Okay. So uh, was... Mask on the whole time. Yeah. You have to order your beverage. They have four choices. You have to order it by number because nobody can hear what the F you're saying. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, it was fine, but I, I despise Southwest. I. Don't despise Southwest as I just as much as I despise not having an assigned seat. I despise 
Like, yeah, I, I guess maybe I would that's rather fly JetBlue just simply because right. I can pick my seat out and know where I'm at. Yeah, but to JetBlue, you've got to go to Long Beach. Right. So Which is fine because it's not that is far. Is it really fine? It's a small airport. You know, it's one of those things where you, if you've ever flown out of, into Southern California, Long Beach is obviously between John Wayne Airport in Orange County and LAX I'm spoiled LA. though, right? Because I've been flying out of John Wayne for so long. Yeah. It's so easy and it's so close. Right, but... Yeah, considering the trade-off, okay, it is a little bit farther, but Long Beach yeah. is one of those places where you park, you can be at the gate, but from parking the car to walking to the gate, you can be at the gate in less than like five minutes. And then from the gate to, or from the, the ticket counter to the gate, it's just a short little walk, and they've remodeled yeah. it, so it's kind of nice. I had a um, pretty interesting experience actually getting off the plane on Sun Friday night, got off the plane, uh, went to get an Uber, because I yeah. Ubered, went to get an Uber, and Uber said, sorry, no cars available. That is the weirdest thing. It was bizarre. And then Are you sure it wasn't just you because of that other Uber snafu? Yeah, yeah, no, that all got sorted out by the way. I got my money back. But the um They didn't put you on some sort of Uber list? No, 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 no. no. It was there there's just not a lot of drivers now. Because they don't of put COVID. Up the hassle, and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um yeah, it, it's pretty easy to not get a ride. So um, what'd you do? Cab it? No, I waited like two minutes and tried it again and then, Okay, that wasn't too and bad. And then a uh the driver was from um the Ukraine. Oh, she was a lady from the Ukraine. She was really nice, really I, friendly. I can't remember where it was at. I take I had taken an Uber. I think I was in Vegas. Yeah, I had taken an Uber, and my driver was actually from Orange County. That's weird. Like she drove all the way out to Vegas just to work the weekend Ubering, and then drove back. I'm like, why? I mean, maybe she's making enough money to pay I think for the gas. I think it's yeah, the volume, the, yeah. the number of people, and, and right. the opportunities to pick people up in the Vegas Strip. Well, I mean that that. It makes sense. I just, dude, just I could a, not imagine being an Uber driver. I would, I would lose it. Do you talk to your driver? Or are you, get, or are you just kind of silent in the back seat? A lot of times I don't, but um, the I, whole ride home on on Friday night, we talked the whole time. Yeah, I was gonna say I, yeah. I usually make small talk with the driver just because I feel odd just sitting in the back, just being completely. Quiet. I guess it kind of just depends on the driver or what I'm doing. Like yeah. I've, I've had times where I've literally told them like, Hey, I'm sorry. I'm on a conference call and they yeah, insist on enough. talking to you. Yeah. And I'm like, bruh. Yeah. Or if you're English, bruv. Oh, I bruv. <laughs> <laughs> For your Shakespearean homies. I guess. Are they nice. Shakespearean? I don't know. When you're, when you're speaking the, the old English with the E at the end of old. Yeah. Oldie. Yeah. Oldie. Yeah. Oldie Englishy. I don't think that's accurate by the way. Probably not. But mm -mm. We'll just run with it. Mm -mm. Uh, it's six dollars and fifty cents shipping, by the way. If you want to buy this brick thing for fourteen dollars, so it's twenty uh, twenty dollars fifty cents. You just clicking on buy it now? No, I'm not. I just you're, looked at you're it. I just, just looked seconds from doing that. I am not, <laughs> and not in front of you. Yeah, exactly. No, um, what you do in the privacy of your own house yeah, when nobody's right. watching is no, your seriously. own business. Um, no, 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 no. I think it's fine. So, okay, wait. I want to go back though. I do want to hear about this weird scooter thing. Okay, so because. Yeah, I, I, I'm concerned. I'm familiar with Razor scooters, the ones where the handlebars fold and it all folds up in this smaller, weird shape, and then you can unfold it and latch it up. So that's what Grayson's had. That's that standard Razor scooter. When we were researching it for our trip, we found that they have like an adult version that has a bigger, bigger wheels on it. Like I think they're right. nine inch wheels, and but it folds up just the same way. Well, for summer, because. As I mentioned earlier, you know, Grayson used to go to a summer camp in which they would do field trips. So they would go to Knott's and, you know, Angel Stadium, all these parks. Well, because of COVID, they're still running the camp. They're just not going anywhere. So why? So we're not signing them up for, for the camp. And because we're still working out of the house, yeah. we're around. So there's no need to do it. But we did want Grayson to kind of go and have that camp experience. And so we signed him up for a camp in Tehachapi, California, which is kind of the middle of nowhere. Does it's, he have to stay out there? Yes, it's oh, an cool. overnight camp. He's there for a full week. Yeah. Um, well, that's good because you don't want to drive to Tehachapi well, multiple times. Right. And uh, Or less or more than twice. Yeah, and Tehachapi is, I think the closest major city is Bakersfield, and Bakersfield is by no means a city. Um, oh, hey, hang on a minute. Buck Owens is from Bakersfield. Yes, but that's he's not from a city, yeah. Anyways, you don't so, think it's a city? It's a city, but it, the high, the it's biggest high rise town. is probably <laughs> like four stories I, tall. I think you'd be surprised if you went to Bakersfield now. You, you think I'm going to see a sky, skyscraper? No, probably not. Right. Yeah, but you will see a crackhead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So we're we're going or Grayson is going to Camp Woodward, which is an action sports camp. Okay. And so Woodward started off in Pennsylvania and they're a huge BMX skate park with wood ramps, concrete, like all sorts of bowls and, and tricks. And it's just a, uh, it's almost like a, a, a theme park if you're into skateboarding or BMXing. So they have a West Coast branch of that and it's in Tehachapi. So we signed him up for a week long, what they call intro to action sports. That's and, cool. And the reason why we chose that one is he can do everything. Yeah. So one night or one day he scooters. The next day he skates. The next day he's on a BMX bike. The next day he's doing parkour. Does he have to bring his own stuff, or they have equipment? Yes. So which one? It, if you do the one week course, yeah. Like if you do like I'm signing up for the week of skating. Yep. You bring your skateboard. Mm. If you sign up for the week of BMXing, you bring your bike. Right. But if you're doing the intro to action sports, you don't have to bring it. They have the equipment because otherwise you're bringing a lot of gear. Right. 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 That's why I'm. But anyways, so Grayson wanted to kind of brush up his skills sure so he wanted to get a better scooter because sure. the apparently the razor scooters aren't really stunt scooters because here's the thing i would have just assumed razor scooters are the only scooters yes no you would be wrong and apparently i learned this too yeah there's a whole segment called stunt scooters so there is and, and i i'm on the internet keep going and i just did it i did a google search for you know scooter stores in orange county because i figured okay maybe some skate shops will have like three yeah, scooters right. in the back corner no, there's a full blown store that sells nothing but skaters called OC Pro Scooters. It's so weird. I it's the retail. Con- I'm 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 astounded that there's enough business to justify you know this establishment, which is right. great, I guess. I, is it? I mean, yeah, it is for the business. It's just, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I, I, hey, look, if that's what you're into, because I mean, obviously, there's there's skate shops, there's bike shops. Right, right. So, but I just didn't realize that scootering was that big of a category yeah, that there was that. enough retail demand to to pay the rent. Right. And so we went there, and they had like a hundred plus scooters in stock, and like the the cheapest like different ones, ones. Yes. That's weird. And it's weird because you look at them like, okay, so what's the difference? And basically, it comes down to like materials. Like some are aluminum, some are steel. What's the so, cool? Like aluminum is that cool? Aluminum is cool because it's lighter, right? But steel is cool because it's stronger. So there's like trade offs. Oh, of course. So maybe you might want the aluminum, or maybe you are might there want any the made steel. Out of carbon fibre? Uh, I did not see any of that. Hmm. And the biggest difference with the the scooters, with the stunt scooter, is they don't have any of the folding collapsible parts. Yeah, so everything that's a weak is weak point. Right. Right. That makes so, sense. So the handlebar is a rigid uh, welded T-bar so that the the stem and the bar is fixed. Hmm. If you want to adjust the height of the bar, you cut the bottom off and it makes it shorter. Oh, weird. If you want to make the handles closer to each other, you cut the bar and slide the handles over. So it's it's very tuned to fit. And I, yeah. And so, did they did they like do a fitting? Well, so that was the thing. So we went there not knowing what we needed to look for. So yeah. like, you know, we're completely open to this whole idea of, of pro stunt scooters. The, oh, the fact that they're called pro scooters, by the way. Yeah. Pro that's scooters. That's actually the category. Yeah. Yeah. That's bizarre. Yeah. You can be a professional. Is there a scooter pro? Apparently. I, if you can be a professional skateboarder, I guess you could be a professional scooterer. I suppose. Are you I a mean, scooterer? Well, you could be a professional overwatcher too. Are you a scooterer? Professional scooter rider? Like you're, what? You're a... Scootist? <laughs> a scootist? <laughs> that's cute. That's, no, that's just when you're snobby about it. Yeah. So anyway, so we go there, we ask a bunch of questions, and the yeah. guys are real nice. And they're oh, I'm sure they're super friendly. Younger dudes. Like, yeah. So I don't know if they work there or own the place, but they're maybe in their early 20s. Okay. And so they, they chose a couple of brands and stuff, and so Grayson tries a couple out. But because he had his birthday the week prior... He's sitting on a whole bunch of Amazon gift cards. Right. So I'm in the store, and of course, I look at to see what it's priced on Amazon. The prices are the exact same. Yeah. So we would have bought it in the store. You need to support your local business and use those Amazon cards for something else, dang it. We did not because we had he had $200 in Amazon uh, gift understood. cards. So we were just like, let's so do it that what, way. How much was the scooter? 200 bucks. <clears throat> okay. Um, it's a $200 scooter. I, <laughs> I'm on this website. I just did search... And I priced, I, uh-huh. you know, I filter price. Yeah. I did high to low. Yeah. Do you want to guess how much the top expensive scooter is? I know, 600? Not quite that bad. It's on sale though, which is good. Oh, okay. Because normal price is $450. And that was the weirdest thing is like, I couldn't figure out what sets the price. Because some, of, I guess some of them, they do have like titanium. So you could get like more exotic metals in, in terms of the, the, the handles or the deck material. Right. And then I was like, okay, they have different wheel designs. 
and that, that was the thing I think that was kind of surprising. Like with skateboarding, you know, you can customize the deck, the truck, the wheels, the bearings. With scootering, it's kind of similar because you can swap out the wheels, the you can swap out the bearings, you can replace the the deck grip tape with different styles or patterns. Uh, you can get like different BMX style grips for the handlebars. So there is this interesting level of per, uh, personalization. But the f- thing that I found interesting with Grayson, his purchasing decision was based on the appearance of the wheels. <laughs> of course it was. And I was like, hey, buddy, if you're going to buy a car, yeah. you don't buy the car because of the wheels. Well, in this case, you do. In this case, he did. So interestingly enough, like there, the number of brands, there's a ton of different brands. Like, yes. This is Tempish, North Tomahawk, Striker. This one is Dominator. Yeah, Grayson's got it. And it's the team a- edition. There's a tw- there's a team edition, which implies that there is a team. Yeah, Grayson's got a NV Phantom, I think oh, it is. Oh, wow. Series 8, which implies that there was seven previous series. That's a lot of series. Yeah. Eth- this one, this brand's the Ethic Erewhon. Yeah. Mad. Mad with two Ds, by so, the way. So we, we buy this pro scooter thing, and I'm like, all right. And so then, again, because we know we're going to this action sports camp at the end of summer. Yeah, yeah. Grayson starts, he gets his board out. And so we got him some new uh, knee pads and uh, elbow pads. And okay. my coworker recommended him. He's my, my coworker is 50 years old, 53 years old. Yeah. And he's been skateboarding since he was like seven. Were they boneless? What, the pads? Yeah. No, he recommended 187 killer pads. That's the <laughs> actual brand. That is but, a terrible brand name. Yeah. But it's that skate, I get it though. 187 isn't that yeah. like cop code for murder, killing, death, kill? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But the pads themselves are actually really beefy, really nice. Yeah, I've all, I used I boneless for okay, years. Yeah. That's, that's the another like really big brand. So the interesting thing is, is like you know we pick up a pair of those and then we go out to the skate park and sure as shit we see people wearing those pads, but then we're also seeing people riding those stunt scooters in the skate park, and the crap that they're doing with those scooters is just insane. There was I, okay, I'm not gonna lie, I saw something probably on Instagram uh, recently of a dude that. It's just a set of stairs, maybe yeah. like a 15 set of stairs, and he just, does a backflip on his scooter. And just jumps it, right. A backflip. Yeah, so that's what Grayson's working on. Ma- Doing backflips. Well, maybe just jumping stairs at first, and then you think adding... He, you think he'd do a backflip? Well, Woodward does have like a, a foam pit. Yeah, which is super so cool. So maybe he could. And so that's the thing is with the intro uh, class or the intro camp or whatever he's doing, he doesn't have to bring his own gear, but I've I, they don't say if you can bring your own gear or not. So I sent them an email saying, hey, my son has all this stuff. Would it make more sense for him to bring something that he's familiar with? Therefore, there's not that weird learning curve. Because if you've ever tried borrowing somebody else's yeah, bike, yeah. it's always weird. Yes, but you know what? You missed out, actually, now that I think about this. Because I'll bet you if you bought the scooter from those dudes, they would have fit it to him. And now you're guessing. Well, see, that's the thing is I asked him, how do you fit? And he's like, oh, it's just a matter of taste. There's no actual measurement because i was thinking like with a bicycle you yeah. want the stem the seat like, right there's specific attributes right. scootering no such just thing whatever you like it's whatever you like so at that point how do you find out what you like well i guess you just keep trying it and you go oh this sucks or this is good but yeah, yeah. so uh with with grayson's his, his scooter is just stock height i mean it's it's stock for the time being <laughs> The fact that you can prefer that scooter is stock or not stock is pretty funny. Well, everything we have in our house is modified in some way or another, right? His his GT has his GT BMX bikes has some pegs on it. He's mm-hmm. got stickers on it. His board's got stickers on it. So he's yeah. he personalizes it in some way, Those, shape, or yeah, form. Yeah. So when I think like stock versus not stock, I think more along the lines of like harder core, uh-huh. not just putting a sticker on something. Well, yeah, 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 yeah that's true. But I mean, for an eleven year old, that's still modified yeah, like sticker bomb did you ever do summer you. camps as a kid like an aw- overnight away camp i want to tell you that i remember that but i don't i have no idea i don't know the answer to that i have never been to like an overnight away camp as a kid i don't have a clue like i think when if we, i did it did not leave a memorable impression yeah like in elementary school the they had like a i want to say it was like a sixth grade science camp in which you got to spend like a night or two like up in the up in the local mountains oh i did the sixth grade we did uh the Catalina Island Marine Institute. We okay. did that for, it was several days. Yeah. But so, I, I don't know, if, is that camp? Well, you got to stay the night away from home for a couple of days, right? Yeah, my mom was one of the chaperones. No, oh, so. Or the, is that what they're called, the chaperone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 the joy killers. No, no. no. They, I don't remember, like, it was fine. I think I had fun. <laughs> but I, I've never had that that overnight camp experience. So this is kind of interesting for me to see 
Well, right. What, Grace if, would be what so if we give you? It. We'll take you to an adult camp. Well, yeah. As an adult, I've been able to stay away from home. No, no, no. no. Like an, up- I, I guarantee you, there's an adult summer camp. Oh, there totally has to be. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you go to one of those? Oh, I'll have to look into that it. That would be pretty funny. Yeah. Just go by yourself. Yeah. Sorry, go to camp, everybody. Sorry, kid. Gotta yeah. go. Yeah. But um. No, you so, got to get dropped off. So and you everything. you mentioned the fact that the camp. Yeah, exactly. You mentioned that the camp is up in Tehachapi, so it, it's about. I four, didn't mention that. You mentioned that. But it was you don't want to drive back and forth. Oh yeah, right, exactly. So it's three hours away. So my wife and I, are like, oh, you know, just because this is an action sports camp, Grayson could break a bone. Yeah. Right. There's Could always that chance. Right, right, right. And we didn't want to have to drive three hours to get there mm-hmm. in case something happened. So we started looking on Airbnb to find places that yeah. we'd want to stay at nearby. Sure. When Bakersfield is your nearest <laughs> major city. Well, what about, there, is there anything in Tehachapi? Yes. And that's what we ended up doing is we we, we got a spot in Tehachapi. Don't uh, be those parents that go watch. No. Okay. We're not allowed to. Oh, good. Partially because of the whole COVID thing. Yeah. Did, so literally, don't... like, we're dropping him off on, on Sunday, and we won't see him again until the following Saturday. That's cool. So the only reason we're staying into Hatchby is simply because of the fact that we didn't want it to drive back and forth multiple times. What embarrassing thing are you going to do when you drop him off? I don't know. Honk the horn? Or pick him up. You got to do something embarrassing. Uh, maybe I'll bring my scooter. All right, honey. Make sure you change your underwear. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Be weird. <laughs> well, that goes without saying. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so we're just trying to figure out what we're going to do. And and I think the plan is just to do nothing. We're just going to bring some books and just relax and just kind of enjoy that that kid-free silence, if sure. anything. Yeah. Um, you I know, mean, I'm assuming you still have to work. I think I'm just going to take a vacation that week. All right. I mean, we could work, but why? Uh, yeah, I guess. Go on some hikes, maybe. That was the thing. Is like, we're okay, we could go hike. Like Lake, Lake Isabella is about two hours from there. Yep, Lake Isabella is pretty. The Sequoia National Forest is about three hours from there. So that makes it kind of far for a day trip. But so we are kind of thinking, like, what could we do just to kind of go out and explore the yeah, local area? Yeah. But at the absolute worst case scenario, the house has bicycles. And so we can just go right into town and just kind of have fun that way. Yeah, town? Is that what we're going to call it? I don't know. Tehachapi, they, I they, guess it's a town. It's a town. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's. It's sized. Yeah, there's people there. I've heard of it before. I found this camp, so I know it yeah, existed. Yeah. Have, you, have you been there? I've never been. Oh, I've been through it. I've never been. I've, I've been through like Bakersfield and like right. Fresno and Visalia. I've been up like Central California. I've just never My been up in the mountains. My grandparents lived in Visalia. I've been in Visalia many, many times. So the interesting thing with Tehachapi is it, it's at elevation. It's like right. thirty two hundred feet or something like that. So the Central Valley is pretty hot in the summer well Tehachapi is big in the mountains isn't it it's of? in the mountains yeah. yeah it's 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 you know at a 3200 feet right. at what elevation so if it's 95 in the in the desert it'll be in the low 80s you maybe hope. upper 70s well i i looked at the historical averages oh, got it. Yeah, okay. and it, it seems pretty mild up there so that's cool that should be interesting but he's pumped because we we looked into this and we're like oh hey there's also one up they woodward has some sort of uh, affiliation with with Squaw, like the ski resorts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so there's one up in Tahoe. And so we're like, hey, do, would you rather go to Tahoe instead? Yeah. But the difference between the one in Tahoe and the one in Tehachapi is Tahoe is a day camp only, so it's from like 8 to oh, 5. yeah. So you would have to... So we'd have to pick them up right, every night. Right, right, right. But it's half the cost because it's there's no overnight right. aspect to it. I wonder what they feed them. Well, that's the thing is with this overnight camp, like the menu, they have... It's it's pretty damn awesome looking. They have yeah. different restaurants and they can choose where they want to eat. They have like a food truck. Seriously? Yes. They have a they have a coffee shop and the kids can just get whatever they want whenever they want. It's How do you pay for that? Well, it's you, included? When you pay for the camp, it's all included in the cost. Oh, wow. Uh the only thing that isn't included is there's like a booze. Well, yeah. The the, the snack shop. Yeah. Um so if you wanted like packaged candies or, you know, Skittles like or M&M's or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those you would have to pay for. And then there's like t-shirts and... and well, yeah. They're not going to get... Well, I'm, they'll, maybe they'll give you some merch. No, the merch is... They, you might get like a camper shirt. Yeah, right. But if you wanted like a, a Woodward hoodie or something oh, like that, you'd have to pay for it. And much like prison, you can send your kid with a with a, an account. Uh-huh. And so you can put money in their account. <laughs> yeah, so they can buy their ramen. And they can buy it at the commissary. Right. Yeah, they yeah. Can. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So... <laughs> <laughs> or they get shivved for it. Possibly. Yeah. That's Speaking good. of shivved, Uh-oh. I was, uh, so we bought that scooter. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it, of course, it comes in cardboard box. And so I'm cutting up the cardboard. And so I've got the box cutter. I cut the cardboard up and 
nothing to do with the knife. Yeah. But the cardboard flap was open, and so I'm making this long cut that's maybe Ooh, like did three you drag feet your long. Hand on it. I dragged my fingertip oh, on the edge of the cardboard. That hurts. I, you know, that whole uh, torture of sh- uh, bamboo shoots yeah, under yeah, the yeah, fingernail. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. I shoved the edge of the cardboard up under my fingernail yeah. a good like quarter of an inch, oh, dude, half an inch. So bad. And then I peel, I pull my finger back, and there's a flap of skin under my fingernail bed, and it was. Squirting blood. Yes, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that sucked. Yeah, that sucks a lot. I stabbed myself with a um, utility knife recently. That you, that, well, it it's not that's not fun. You know the I, flat ones. Yes, that are like the snap off the awful ones. No, no, no. They're they're flat. It's like white, and to use it, you push. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wasn't paying attention. I was using the end of it to pry something, and it opened. Oh, and it, into but your palm. it just opened like at the very tip, tip of it. it into my palm and but it was enough that it bled pretty good yeah uh, i've never had a cardboard the, paper cut oh dude it's that terrible i've just, done this almost the same thing that you've done not under my nail it just cut the edge like the side of my finger, finger? but yeah. it's like a really 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 thick paper cut. yes like, yeah and it was the craziest thing and oh, so it hurts yeah it's it's weird like um like you describing you cutting your your palm with the utility knife it's like yeah. okay that sucks i don't cringe Oh, no, mine but just the, sucks. But what but you're talking about yeah, makes me want to vomit. It's cringe. Yeah, 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 I don't like it. <laughs> Why is it like a paper cut or something like that? Totally well, cringe. Especially under your nails. Like I had, oh. I don't remember. I was doing something once in my thumbnail, basically, like, pull. Like, mm. I caught it, and it mm. almost, like, tried to rip. Oh, God, that hurts. Oh. Yeah, it's anything with your nails is just torture. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, sorry for that cringe. Crying. Do we need, like, another, like, sloth fact to just, like, as I don't a have palate anymore. cleanser? I mean, sloths are really slow. They're basically... Did you know that... They're a, basically... They have so, such little muscle, they're essentially just a bag of bones. Did you know that a group of kittens is called a Kindle? No. Yes. Really? Yes. I like that. I've never and heard that And the only before. reason I knew that is because I was driving through the canyon listening to the radio, and the DJ was like, my kids into cats. Here's some cat facts. And that was oh, one of the so ones weird. he said. I am... Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's bizarre. Uh, that's like a, a group of crows is called a murder. Yeah, well, which is pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, pff, I'd rather be a murder than a Kindle. Oh, for Kindle's sure, just for a, sure. Get an ebook from Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Although I do have a Kindle, I do like my Kindle. I don't. I have uh, the app on yeah. my phone and my iPad, but I don't actually have like the e-reader type device. I like. So I, I'll tell you this: my Kindle had been literally all over the world. I lost it, and this is why. This is why another reason: the state, this stupid state. I lost it somehow on a plane in New Jersey. Okay. I, but, yeah, I mean, Jersey, it's a black yeah. hole. So, anyways, if you're listening in New Jersey. I and you're reading my Kindle. <laughs> I recommend you leave. <laughs> um, no, so what's what's crazy, I love it so much. By the time I got to the end of the jetway, I had already ordered a new one. You didn't even turn around and go back and try to get it? No, it was just, sorry, we don't know. Really? They wouldn't even go look? Well, no, because I didn't. How? Yeah, how did that happen? My wife. One time. No, before. there was a reason why. Oh, you know what it was? I, I, I apologize. My story was, was incorrect. It was when I got to my hotel that then I realized, realized it wasn't it was in my there. backpack. Yeah. So I ordered one while I was at my hotel. That go. being said, um, a couple days later, the airline did call me. Oh. And good. they said, oh, we have your Kindle. Your Kindle. Do you want it back? I'm like, well, of course I do. So I ended up giving that one to my mom. Oh. But I have. So she's got the world weary one. Oh, the one that's traveled the world. Yeah, I was yeah. like, world weary? I'm like, is that a model? Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. And then I got the whatever. And then I, I ended because it was like a newer model, I guess that had come out in the interim. But I, yeah. I use it all the time, man. I travel with it. I read on it. I'm I, actually reading a really terrible book series right now that I can't wait to finish. I have a hard time reading like on electronic devices. Like I, I still prefer like a printed. Book. I do too. But the reason that I, I, can, I could, I could just use the app on my phone, but it hurts my the screen right, the brightness backlight. and stuff. Right. Yeah. So this paper white is really easy to read, and I like the fact that as an example. Uh, South America, I think I read, what, four books, five books in a month. And That's kind of cool. wouldn't want to carry those with me. Right, right. right. So it made way more sense. Because I'd get to where I was going or I'd like plop down. Even on my trip up to Alaska, like I'd plop down in the middle of nowhere and spend like an hour taking a nap and reading. Yeah. That's a nice way to unwind. And that's that's kind of the thing we're looking at doing in Tehachapi while Grace is at camp. Yeah, is just, just kind of just relax. Read. And read. Yeah. yeah. Really just do nothing. I have a stack of like physical books that I still need to read. So I should probably get on some of those. And then with Amazon, you get... A free book a month. Right. Yeah. Every Jeanette, month. Jeanette is a, is a 
ver- voracious reader yeah. with Amazon. And so she's always getting those free ones and she's doing I've that. been, I, honestly, man, I haven't read as much as I normally do because I've just been like activities and work and like, you know. I've got a couple of books that we purchased with intents to read. We just haven't gotten around to it. So that's what we're kind of hoping like we'll go somewhere and bring them with us. Yeah, no, that'd be good. Um, I have a... Uh, an adopted old lady update. Oh yeah, let's hear this. So Sandy, we we've hung out. This is I think the th- three times now. Sandy, I'm gonna remember that one day. Yeah, that's that's her name. Sandra. I don't know if it's her full name is Sandra. We, she just goes by Sandy, and that's what we've been calling her. Maybe. So Grayson had a uh, soccer game yesterday, so yeah. we picked Sandy up and brought her to the field, and she cheered on Grayson at the soccer game, and then we went to In and Out for lunch afterwards. Nice. And then. Dropped her back off at her place. I feel bad. My nephew's had, he started baseball last two weekends ago. Yeah. Two weekends ago, something like that. I couldn't go to his first get to opening right, day. Right, because you were out of town. Uh, no, I was doing something else. And oh. then couldn't go to opening day, was out of town, and then didn't go see his game yesterday. Because I was doing something else. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe next week. Like Grayson missed, yeah, maybe. Grayson missed his first game. Well, they're playing, they're playing because it's twice break. a week, I think. Yeah, the, the whole COVID thing has kind of thrown sports off. Like, the yeah. schedules are all weird. Well, like, I think, the, too, he's at that point. He's at – it's still machine pitch, but it's like the second year of machine pitch. Cause so then the transitions to coach pitch, I think, in the second half of the season. Maybe, but right yeah. now what they're doing is they're, they're actually playing more games. I think it's two games a week, whereas, like, he's at that level now. Yeah, they yeah. play two games a week instead of one, and he practices, like, twice a week. It's a lot of – Baseball. Yeah. Grayson, when we signed him up, this was supposed to be just like a, a drills camp. Yeah. But then the state relaxed the, the restrictions for COVID. Oh, that's what so, you said, right. And so that changes. So now they're actually playing games. and so he, Is he going to play baseball again? Uh, Does he want to? Maybe next season. Yeah. Yeah. He, we asked him if he wanted to play for spring ball, if he wanted to do soccer or baseball. But because of the, the mask wearing and social distancing in the dugout, he wasn't crazy about that. Like, he doesn't see anything fun about that. Yeah. So he'd rather just do soccer because at least with soccer... When you're on the field, you don't have to wear a mask, and he's just running his ass off. How does that even make sense, though, when you think about, like, the logics of this whole thing? like I know. Okay. I know. Well, like, speaking of logic, like, the CDC has revised their social distancing guidelines from six feet down to three feet. So schools are now... Oh, really? Yes. So I guess they were actually to do some scientific studies and tests. Well, they're also saying there's an uptake in cases, so that's fun. In certain states. I guess in California, the... At least... Well, L- LA County, they were saying like their their record low number of cases hmm. since the whole pandemic began. Got it. But anyway, so since the CDC has revised the social distancing guidelines to just three feet, schools are now resuming full day in person instruction. So up to this point, Grayson's been doing the hybrid. Uh, we got a new follower on Instagram just mor- now. By the mornings way. at home, and then like in the uh, afternoon, he goes to school for two and a half hours. So starting on Monday, he's going to be in, in class. From 8 to 2, daily. And with a mask. With a mask. Yeah, yeah, got it. But now, instead of the desks being 6 feet apart, they're now 3 feet yeah, apart. Yeah, I think my sister was saying that her kids are going back to school full-time as well. Uh, soon? I can't remember when she said, but, but it sounded like... The thing that's deal. surprising to me is the fact that, okay, school gets out like in early June. So at this point, there's six-ish weeks of school left. And they're kind of, it's, To me, it seems like it's kind of a big deal for the teachers to adapt their teaching style for, for just six more weeks rather than just letting them continue to do what they're doing, finish out the school year and then start with this in-person learning in the fall. If that makes any sense. I guess. I mean, I, I, to me, it's six of one half dozen of another as the expression goes hot cross buns. I have no idea what that means. Oh, but yeah, it doesn't really, I I don't know, man. If if they can go back, they can go back. I just, it's going to be weird. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I feel for the, like, it, it pro- maybe, maybe it's because they want the parents to have some relief. I don't know. But it's funny, like, your kids are going back to school. Nobody's going back to the office. It's just like a weird. It is a weird what's thing. What's what? And then, I don't know. There was some, like, super strain I heard about recently that, I don't know. And then the vaccine, you're going to have to get it every six months, apparently, potentially. Yeah. They, I, so, my wife and I, we, we, we got our second round of the vaccines this past week. So in another week or so, we'll be at full 5G strength. Yeah. Have you noticed your reception improving yet? A little bit. Has Bill Gates called you? Uh, he has. He says <laughs> if I share the email to 50 people, he will oh, send me money. Yeah, good. And then you'll so, have great fortune. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, it's so, so funny. But yeah, no no side effects. Like Jeanette had like a little bit of a headache the, the day after. But 
Yeah. I was otherwise fine. And, and so we're kind of excited to not be done with it, but to actually have the, the, to be fully vaccinated. But we have seen that the, because the way the, the, the development of the vaccines happened, it was so kind of, I don't want to say rush, but they were really quick to bring it to market and do the testing and get through it. They're still trying to figure out what the long-term efficacy of it is yeah. and whether or not you'll need an annual booster shot or one in six months or yeah. whatever. But I, I get a flu shot every year. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's if this is going to be something like that where I just got to go get a shot. Yeah. Eh, well, we've talked about my aversion to needles <clears throat> repeatedly. So Yeah, Grayson uh, has big aversion to needles and because he we signed up for the skate camp they required a physical so we had a doctor appointment this past week where he went and he got a physical and there were some shots that he was due for some immunizations and just to see how worked up and freaked out he got before the doctor even said a word to him like the door opens and he gets he just starts tensing up the doctor's like you can relax i'm not the one giving you a shot as long as I'm in this room, right. you have nothing to worry about because I'm not vaccinated. Just wait for the nurse. So that helped while the doctor was in the room. Yeah, right. As soon as the doctor leaves, <laughs> he just ramps it up. Yeah. And he had to get three vaccines. One was... Uh, Polio? No, one was Rabies? The, they, they call Do they it, give children rabies vaccines? They should. He got the tetanus. He got the Tdap. Oh, yeah. You don't want that. He That's got tetanus. He got... Lockjaw. He got one for uh, meningitis. Like the... That one you don't yeah. want because it's a whole brain well, then, disfiguring yeah. thing. And yeah. then he got the uh, HPV oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, vaccine. Yeah. So he had to get jabbed three times. Yeah. And I don't know if it was the, the nurse's intention, but the first two were just not as painful. I guess the smaller needles or something. Yeah, yeah. And the, the tetanus one is kind of a tetanus bigger... Tetanus sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And so and that the arm one... arm is super sore. Yes. Yeah. And so unfortunately, you know, he's freaked out. The first two, like... To me, he seems like he was making a bigger deal out of the actual shot than yeah. it was. It was right, but then the third one came and he was he just lost it. So it was kind of it was. I, it, it's weird as a parent because you're watching him get freaked out, and and for me as a kid, yeah, I was terrible at shots. Like they had what they called the papoose. It was a it was like a a, a plastic backboard with Velcro straps. Yeah, it'd strap you down to They it? would strap oh, me really? down so they could give me an inoculation because I would just squirm and wiggle so yeah, much right. and thrash right. they couldn't do it. So Grayson wasn't that bad. Yeah. But he was still pretty twitchy and, and, and like it was hard to get him to kind of relax enough. I just I, I, I just hated needles and like th- to give blood, well, they would have to do my finger. They'd do the finger prick yeah. and even that I was not well, and for. The, the, the doctor was pretty cool because she had a sense of humor because Grace is like, I don't like getting injections. And the doctor was like, I'm glad you don't. You would be strange if you <laughs> liked getting them. Right. <laughs> and it took him a while to realize, oh yeah, nobody really likes yeah, it. Right. And so, and I, I kept trying to tell him like, hey, it's going to suck, but it's like a pinch. Once you get past it, you'll be fine. Right. Your arm might be sore and ache, but beyond that, the actual pain level is pretty minor. Mm, you know, okay. And then the doctor's like, well, would you rather die of, of you know, some brain disease? And he's like, mm, no, I guess well, not. I don't know. He, right? He, like He contemplated it for yeah, like a half right. beat. But yeah, so anyways, he's he's up to dates on his shots. He's neutered. He's spayed. He's all, you know. As, as he should be. Yeah, yeah. You know, help tr- reduce the pet population, the Bob Barker. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but he, but he is vaccinated, and I was able to send in his... Uh, his documents, but it's, it's so weird, like getting a physical at the age of 11. Yeah, that is. Well, nah, I guess not. I had to get one when I played football. And right. Baseball and that's basically and what it is. They yeah. just want to make sure that he doesn't have any, any physical conditions or any sort of mental health they or dietary restrictions. Uh, he had to uh, drop his drawers yeah. and, and give a, a cursory glance to make sure everything was in place. But no, like remember like the hernia yeah, check that no. didn't do that. He didn't have to do the hernia check. Oh. I think it, cause he's prepubescent. So maybe that, doesn't I'm pretty sure the same they were descended so I think she was able to visually huh. <laughs> confirm that well no because it's like the hernia part is the there's I don't know dude I, I don't know yeah I have no idea I just remember having to do it and yeah. it sucked but he also had like she had him like uh bend over and and touch his toes so she can see the curvature of his spine oh yeah like the scoliosis so he, yeah, check right. and so it does was, he have scoliosis no no he's okay. clear there nice and straight like an arrow uh, she didn't use those words, but she said that he didn't have scoliosis. Oh, well, yeah. So I don't know if you want to be nice and like arrow straight anyways. That's not a good spinal you want the curvature. S curve, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. So he had all that, 
all that taken care of. Nice. So he's ready to go. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I always, I wanted to go to Woodward when I was a kid. I didn't even know that place existed until I was like an adult. But, oh, yeah. But it, it seems like a, a ton of fun. I mean, he's basically set up to, the way they have it set up is obviously, they, they because of COVID, they've cut the camp size down in half. Which is which is probably a good thing, oh, and totally. he'll get way more. He'll have way more fun. Right. Yeah. So the 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 ratio gets better between the staff members and the in the campers. Right. Um, and then there every day is a different themed activity, and it's there's free time and structure time. So Would like you say every day is a new day. You could say that. Perfect. And uh, I'm looking forward to kind of hearing about it from his viewpoint yeah. to see what he gets out of it, because that's. It's been interesting just even in talking to him about like what we did in, in spring break in, in Arizona, like what his highlights were, what his favorite parts were. And sure. it's, it's just kind of interesting seeing something from somebody else's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's super interesting. That's, uh, that'll be fun. He's going to have a really good time. You got anything planned for the summer? Uh, Is it too far out in advance? <laughs> Dude, I have no idea. Um, I've got no clue. I should, I guess, plan something. We're trying to figure out. Yeah. I need to do, I need, I, I keep talking about it and I haven't, I, I just need to figure out a camp trip pretty soon. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got at this point. Are you going to um, wait until after you get your control arms installed? Um, yeah. Cause they will be, I mean, that's a, an in stock item. Oh, is so it? Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I didn't know if it was like a lead time. No, those aren't like a thing where, Oh yeah, it's going to take forever to get. It's just a, when do I get them installed? It's going to be the question. When are you going to get them installed? I don't know. Just could, based on your schedule? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. And is I, it something you're planning on doing like during the week or is it a weekend thing? No, it would be like a Saturday or Sunday. Driveway take, install? Yeah, I'll probably okay. do them at, at the the guy who I know. I'll probably do it at his house. I okay. don't know. Yeah, anyways, because, you know, ball joints can be a pain in the ass. Um, yeah. yeah, but I, I would like to get a camp trip planned and some other stuff. Maybe do a a short motorcycle ride There was like a couple days. There was an interesting number of people because like when you're out on these um parklands like there's the blm kind of areas out in sedona we were when we were on the at ride we were out in the middle of nowhere yeah and also there's just like a little enclave of yep. trailers and yep. people like solar panels that's what's and great just, about blm yeah it was it was mind-blowing to me because it's like yeah. you're in the middle of nowhere it's yeah like, all right i mean that's what's I, I like that kind of stuff that's where i like to camp yeah it was just I don't know why it just kind of struck me. It's like, oh, okay, so this is what goes on. Right, right, right. Because like, when I go camping, it's usually, okay, I'm at a campground. I'm at a right. state park or whatever, right. but I'm at a defined Yeah, yeah. I mean, those spot. are also okay, but the cool thing about BLM is that you don't, you know, like, the, I've camped on BLM in Death Valley. Yeah. And you just pull up. And, and Would you ever do, good. like, the whole rooftop, like, tent thing? Or? I thought about a rooftop tent, but my issue, and I'm air quoting issue, is uh, it takes up the almost entire roof, and it puts way more weight up top. Yeah. Um. And I can sleep in my, until I get to the point where, and if this ever happens, I've got like too much stuff in the truck, yeah, like a fridge and it just becomes, you can't sleep in it because of space. Then, right. you know, it's not, it's not, it's not on the list. I'd rather just sleep in it. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, me. if, if it's just you and me, Loki, my, my buddy has a, uh, a Lexus LX 470. So basically the, the Toyota Land Cruiser. And he's got a awesome rooftop tent. I want to say it's a, uh, I think the brand is like CVT or something like that. Yeah. No, but, there's, dude, there's a ton of them. It's a clamshell one, right? No. So instead of being a clamshell, it has like, oh, it, it pops, pops up, up yeah. and it's got like these angled supports. Yeah. There's those, there's like, there's clamshells. There's one that's called a super light. The tents, like the super light brand is fairly inexpensive. Yeah. Um, Relatively speaking, it's like $1,500. The, oh, that's not bad at all. His was like, I think he said 3500 Yeah. Most of them are four or five thousand there's yeah. some company selling like a fifteen thousand dollar carbon fiber one don't yeah, ask. this one is i think the, the company's based out of like australia or something mm -hmm. like that so it's like legit like canvas and right, materials right. and stuff are pretty nice i mean they're nice but again like he uses it all the time like yeah. literally we were at soccer practice on on friday and he was parked next to the field and he popped up in the the uh the tent on the roof and he was up there hanging out with the dog and just watching everything from it's that it sucks you've got to lift your dog up in there He's he had a German Shepherd, he? and it was How's no it big deal. Well, he just opens the the tailgate, stands yeah. in the tailgate, puts the dog up, and then just climbs up. How, how much does the dog weigh? Do you think it it was a smaller female, so maybe like eighty pounds. That's a lot of weight. Yeah, Meh. he's buff. 
Apparently. Yeah. Why? Well, it he, also helps that the dog isn't he like just dog dead workout. weight. The dog is probably helping. Well, yeah, sure. He just does doggy workouts. Maybe. That's all. That's all he does. He doesn't Maybe do that's what you he need to do. You, you, you should exercise with the dog and see what that does. Nah. Pass. No. Um, <laughs> No, I just don't like the... I mean, I, I do like the concept of a rooftop tent. I just... It doesn't fit my needs at the moment. Yeah. Well, especially if it prevents you from carrying stuff on the roof that you would need. Yeah, some know? of them, the way they are, like the one, Drew, who's actually our... He's our new Instagram follower today. Oh. Uh, uh, but he, those ones, the one he is getting or got, it acts... So rather than having a roof rack that it mounts to, it basically becomes your rack and then you can put stuff on top of it. Can you open the tent or do you have to take all the shit off first? No, no, you can open it. Well, depending on what it is, but like you could put max tracks and stuff on that. Well, yeah, max tracks are fine, that. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, man. I've also turned into that person that just left my max tracks on my roof like a total tool. <laughs> it's it's not a good look, but whatever, I'm over it. Yeah. Yeah. It's more custom than a sticker. Yeah, I just don't. <laughs> dude, like getting up there, taking them off. Eh, well, fine. yeah, that is kind of the thing. It's like sometimes. Because you'd have like, to take the brackets off and. You know, oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. I'll just leave them. The uh, <clears throat> that, and then I've got I got to mount my my awning. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. what kind of awning did you get? The one that... have an ARB. It's like an eight foot awning. Is it one of those ones that just goes? Is it rotate? Open? No, it's not a bat wing. Yeah, that's yeah, what no, 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 no. it's just a straight with stakes, and then you just tether it to the ground, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I just got to get it mounted. I got I have brackets and stuff for it, but the way it it's mounts to my. I think the way it mounts to my roof rack is going to, it might be higher than I really want it to be. So I've got to look and see how I can do this. Will it obscure the lighting? Because don't you have lights on the side? No, it'd sit over those. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then actually the rack I have has a um, a light strip, or not the rack, sorry. The, the awning. awning that I got actually has a light oh. as well if I want to install it. That's kind of cool. We've had, yeah. like when we rented, uh, when we were in Williams, we rented a a premium trailer it was a 38 foot trailer with two bathrooms Williams. yeah it's outside the grand canyon oh so uh we rented a trailer there and the trailer had the same thing and like when, when the awning is open there's a strip of of led lights underneath it and what did you pull the trailer with we didn't have to it was already there at the campsite like it's, oh, it's literally like a saying. campground yeah, yeah, that had right, trailers right. set up that for... was like in um i stayed at this campsite in uh uh somewhere in alaska yeah. somewhere out near well it was on my way back into Canada. I have no somewhere where there was actually enough tourist business to have a glamping trailer set up for rental. No, no, no. They, it was a regular campsite. Yeah, but they happened to have a teardrop that you could rent. Oh, okay. So I slept in the teardrop that this, night. This one was like they had like this was a maybe a, a small campground with maybe eighty or a hundred spots. And, oh, this place was and maybe 20. yeah, and maybe forty yeah. were filled with trailers that you could rent. And we happened to just rent the one of the three biggest trailers that they had yeah. available. Oh, that's cool. This one was uh, had showers and stuff, but the lady was like, nope, showers are only for the firemen that are working. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and she's like, but, you know, we can let you use the shower. We'll get you a towel. Like, cool, thanks. <laughs> Don't mind the webcam. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't think about that. There might be videos of me showering and just taking a shower, uh, just trying to be less gross. You Grizzly Adams just... Nope. <laughs> huh well you know if anybody's seeing that footage i apologize there's nothing really else to talk about i don't think no life is good life is good it's i mean good i guess it's yeah. it, you know it's life, I, life is the amount of thing that it should be yeah it's adequate at this moment <laughs> i guess i'm i'm uh oh i i did also you'd be i don't know if you'd be proud of me but um i did not run all week Wow, you yeah, taking like, some time off? I, yeah, it was a little. Well, with with work and every night, it was like, hey, let's do this, let's do this. Yeah. So it was a little. I probably should have just said no. We'll go later, right? And let me go run first, but I didn't because I'm, you know. Yeah, but sometimes taking a break is nice. Like, yeah, so I went on a, a mile and a half today, and it was <laughs> brutal. It was brutal, but it was also like super windy and. Oh yeah, we I do picked have the, the wrong up, time. Yeah. I looked outside. I was like, oh, this looks like a good time to run. No. So I went on a run i went out i had a workout last wednesday that kicked my ass and it was on paper it didn't sound too bad it's just like it's at the top of the minute three burpees no and then too many burpees then you do air squats oh god until the minute hits and then you do three burpees and then you continue with the air squats the goal was to get 200 air squats done i couldn't walk right oh dude you'd be destroyed Uh, yeah I couldn't walk. Like mm-hmm. I was walking like stiff leg tin man all jerk herky yeah. jerky 
on Thursday. And then Thursday, we did box jumps. And I could sort of do those, but it wasn't pretty. And then Friday, I was like, no, I'm just taking the day off. Yeah. Like, I, I, it wasn't until yesterday that I was actually finally able to walk normally again. Well, I haven't even been doing like any strength training or anything, so I really need to stop being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> you got a couple hours left in the day. You got you got an opportunity. I'm probably honestly, I'll probably just go on a long walk. Yeah, yeah. That's sometimes like the best thing that I think that's the best new habit that my wife and I have set up is just every day we go for a two three mile walk. I didn't run, but I did walk several miles every day oh you're good um i did also go to well it's not great cardio but i did go um there's so right by where my hotel was up in up in newark where i was staying yeah there's actually uh this marsh area right because it's, it's it's like an inlet uh of the bay yeah the san francisco bay and they actually used to do salt mines and stuff there or the salt not okay. mines but they would evaporate that salt pools that's what, that's what i'm talking about all right so that's where they would get a bunch of salt so anyways there's a cool park and it's got um it's got a bunch of trails and a pretty actually steep hill and some other stuff. So I went and walked around with one of the other guys there. We walked like four and a half miles. Or nice. Like that. Yeah. So that was cool. And then, yeah, so I did do yeah, things. Yeah, as long as you're getting out and doing something. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Beats and the hell out of just sitting on the sofa. And I do try to walk like, I'll walk three or four miles, five miles, and then just sit down. There you go. And watch the TV. <laughs> well, you got you got all the work in beforehand. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I will say, I don't know if you've seen, do you have the Apple Plus TV package thing? I still have Apple Plus, yeah. Yeah, Apple TV Plus. Whatever TV Plus, I think it is. Anyways, yeah. I've told you already about uh, the Boom Show. Damn it. Oh. For All Mankind. Yes. Really good show. But there's another show uh, that they just had a special episode. It's Rob McElhaney, the guy from The yeah. League. Um, not The League, from uh, Always Sunny. Always Sunny. Dude, it's He's called like a- Mythic Quest. Yes, I heard it's pretty funny. It's freaking hilarious. It's about a video game company that makes it like one of those MMORPG. Yes. That's a multi our online role-playing game, mel- whatever, yeah. multi, I don't know, is it actually MMORPG? We're going to go with that. Sure. Um, Dear nerds, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but it's basically like like that, uh, what's that big, really famous one that all the- World of Warcraft? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, right, so one of those. But it's about the company and the creator. and yeah. like, Dude, it is friggin' hilarious. I, I've heard. I haven't checked it out. Uh, the, crickets in it. The only show I've actually watched from T- Apple TV Plus has yeah. just been- Ted Lasso. That's Which, the, there's filming new season. I know. We can't wait for that to come back. But I, I, at this point, I don't know if I'm going to pay for Apple TV+. Plus. So I'm still on that free trial because I bought a new Apple TV and it came with a free year. Yeah. And then because of the pandemic, they extended it and then they extended it again. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did extend mine. Uh-huh. There was something else like, oh, oh, God. Okay. I don't know if I told you this yet, but talking about things being extended, and in this case, not one that you want extended. Yeah. So my train. Because uh, I, I told you, we've talked about how your Amtrak, Amtrak hosed yeah, me. Yeah. And I, now I have Amtrak credit, right? Right. It was supposed to be only good for 12 months. Yeah. I got an email that said, no, good good news. We're going to extend it even further. <laughs> Dude, it's not funny. Well, but that gives you more chance to sell it. You can't sell it. Why not? I don't think you can sell it. Because like with airline miles, I can no. buy a ticket with somebody else's name on it using my my miles. Couldn't you do that with your credits? Yeah, and you're going to be like, hey, man, hey, bro, do you want to buy a train ticket? People are like, I don't want to go on a fucking train. Tell somebody you're going to meet up with them, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'll be, I'll meet up on this station. Let me buy you a ticket, and then You know say, what I'll do? I'll take the train next time I have to go um, to, to the office. There you go. Oh, sounds so terrible. But I'd have to leave here Yes. at like 7 in the morning yeah, get to the get there. Station. Oh, yeah. To get there by... 1 a.m.? Yeah. No. Well, but you can drink. You're on a train. Yes. It's terrible. Yeah, I know. You went all the way to Chicago, so I, I know. I know. And I went to Chicago and said, screw this. Yeah. And yeah. didn't come back. Yeah. Well, I mean, I came back, but I came back via. Well, the airport. other thing is, like, again, is just take a bunch of short trips to like San Diego or something. Yeah, I just. Yeah, I could. Or you would buy tickets for like, all your buddies to go to an Angel game and take the train. I could probably buy tickets for everybody in Angel Stadium to take a train from here. Yeah. It's one exit. Oh, I didn't realize it was that Cate- close. I think yeah. the, that's the next exit is that. Yeah, I think you're right. Is the stadium. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I'm good. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, mean, I got to figure something out. Christmas presents? <laughs> I got you. It's so rude. I, I did, dude. I, I, uh, my nieces and nephews, not, uh, but I, for Christmas, I told them I'd take them to... Uh, Legoland, so I gotta figure that out. Oh. I don't know when they're opening. Oh, yeah. 
You would think that they would, I mean, with all the other theme parks opening up, you would think they'd probably be yeah. somewhere around I there. I just don't know how much, like, how fun is that going to be with everything still kind of weird? Legoland is interesting because, like, I know when we I've went, never been. I've been a couple times. Grayson likes playing with the playground equipment more so than any of the actual attractions. And the roller coasters are pretty weak. But it's it's an interesting experience for a younger kid. So it's, it's kind of hard to say. But as an adult, yeah. But they do serve good food and alcohol in the park so that that does help no they do yeah no well, yeah maybe i don't know we'll, we'll have to figure out a time and it'll be fun i mean i, I do want to go i've heard the little mini world is really cool yeah the the scale models that they build of, yeah. of all like the familiar landmarks and stuff are pretty awesome yeah no it sounds fun i just haven't done it all right so uh yeah i guess that's it yeah that's it my ass is falling asleep i gotta oh, we gotta get going okay that's <laughs> a weird way to end it but you want to um, help me wake up my ass. do not <laughs> nope. i will kick it right out the door uh, that'll I, help i appreciate you being here all right later gator bye you've been listening to the ungrown ups podcast and for this we apologize <laughs>